<laughs> right. Welcome to the masterclass, as they probably it's would a say. Masterclass. Doing a masterclass. Um, thank you all for being here. I'm sorry I can't be there. Um, but we're here virtually, which I'm sure will be just as um, entertaining, uh, as they say. <laughs> um, but um, I'm going to hand over to Laura to lead the conversation because I'm not very good at <laughs> leading a conversation. I can follow, but okay. less good at leading. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> very presidential today. Yes. We oui, with uh, cut jeans. Yeah, cut jeans and. Um, in Paris, I feel very presidential. <laughs> Bonjour hier. Coucou hier, comme on dit. Je suis avec le président, Jonathan Anderson. Bonjour. Pour une masterclass. A masterclass. Yes. Have you done a lot of these? No. <laughs> so that's but this is a, one of the first masterclasses. I don't know how masterful it will be, but we can try. Are you president of a lot of things? No. No? This is the first time being a president. Oh, wow. How did you feel? What did you accept? Um, I, I feel I have a lot of responsibility. You have? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a new type of character for me. Um, I, I can do a board member because you can sit behind me a bit. Um, being a president has got more responsibility, so, which is, you know, <laughs> which is a bit more scary. But anyway, I'm here. What do you look forward to being president at the festival de hier? I don't know. I, I think it's such um, it's such an historical platform for young mm -hmm. designers. It's be, it's one of the first, um, and it's kind of birthed many careers. Um, and uh, Jean Patou, Coco Chanel, yeah. they all come from festival. <laughs> yeah. And um, they, I don't know. There's some. What I, I I like about it is it's sort of it's. Um, it's kind of a bringing together of different minds. So it's like there's photography, there's, there's uh, the, the bags, the accessories. Um, and then you're, you know, I'm not there, but you're in this beautiful, beautiful scenic scape. Um, and it's about like a meeting of minds each year. So I, you know, for me, it's sort of, it's a, like it's a massive honor, you know. It's just I wish it wasn't in this year somehow. I feel like it was like, it's like, I'm like oh. Um, but we're here and it's sort of, I don't know, it's sort of, um, I think it's really, of all years, I think it's the most important because ultimately we're starting to see that, you know, the world is changing. So it is about young people. Um, it's about the next generation, less about me, but more about the next generation. Um, because I think, you know, we, we need different eyes on things. So I think that's what I've kind of noticed through going all through all the projects and... Um, so you've seen all the dossiers have, of yes. all the designers? Yeah. How was it? It's very good. It's is a, it? Yeah, no, there's, it, for me, it, it, we've, the edit is such a kind of, um, not one person is alike, which is, you know, sometimes you, uh, you know, I have been sometimes like um, at schools and uh, I have never done master classes, but I've kind of done like, you know, helping certain people. And, and sometimes you find that there's like a movement of clothing where it's like, you know, everything looks like Balenciaga or everything looks like uh, Nike. Or, you know, there's like always this, and what I really like. Uh, one season, everything looked like Gossip Girl. Yeah. So maybe after um, Emily in Paris, oh. it could be a really interesting season next year. Yeah. Um, nice. But um, what was really, each one has this identity. kind of identity. And I, think, I, and, and I think this is what has made it um, really exciting because it's sort of, you know, for me in, in, in fashion, um, uh, for me, it, you can never be done. So it has to be an embryo of something. You can never kind of have a definitive look straight away. I always think sometimes when I see um, uh, younger brands and they kind of feel it was like, oh, it's I do tool and this is my concept, or I do print and this is my concept. All the people in, in, in this edit, it is not just one linear thing. And, and I think that's really important. So they're rich in the identities. Yeah. I think they're they're at the beginning of that, and I think that's what's important. That's you know, really nice. Yeah, and I think that's what I I find really inspiring, and I think it's, uh, you know, and it couldn't have come in a better year. So, 
what kind of ego do you need as a young, when you're a young designer? Um, depends. You, so, you, sometimes you I sometimes I bear an ego. Um, I think maybe it, yeah, this big. <laughs> um, I well, think uh, I think in the many many moons ago, I think there was this moment of the bombastic character. You know. Um, now I think we're in this moment of subversiveness. We kind of want people to be individualistic, but at the same time we want them to, you know, th there's less about the caricature. I think we've kind of moved away from the caricature, and it's about kind of the work somehow. There's like a lot of people like when kind of going through, I haven't, you know, met these people in, in person, but you can sense that there's this idea of work, like workmanship, like to work is like, there's something which feels like a dedication, which I think is less about ego. Now, maybe people will be pleasantly surprised. Um, but um, but no, I, I, I do feel like, you know, I, I don't know, ego in the, in the place of fashion in today's world, I think it's a bit old fashioned. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, it is old fashioned. I, I do, I think, I think we've had that. You yes, know, I did. think, you know, it's like, you know, it's sort of like, the, I think sometimes, like, you know, we all have egos, but sometimes you have to dial it down a bit, you know? It's so what's more important now? Well, the fashion is not the center of the universe. <laughs> it's not? It's not. <laughs> um, that, <laughs> no, I just feel that we... It is. We, it's the first thing we do every morning. I know, but it's, it's it, for me, of the universe. we should be quite humbled that we are able to do this, I think. I think in a weird way, uh, this year should have taught us that that you know you know it's sort of if anyone was watching TV or watching the news over the last eight months you would have probably like I felt very kind of like well what can I do other than you know we can activate making masks we can donate money we can do all these things but to be uh, it's you know w what is fashion's purpose in a crisis um, and I think that's probably one of the biggest questions that I have at the moment. Like, you know, what is the purpose of fashion in a crisis? Um, is it escapism? Is it reality? Is it, is it needed? You know, there's all these different questions, um, which I think in a weird way, when you are kind of in the job, it is very hard to question sometimes because you are, your kind of uh, collection, your, well, your collection, too. collection, collection, and in a weird way, what's been kind of nice about just this moment to be able to kind of like decompress and look at other people's work, you're kind of like, well, maybe, maybe the next generation has the solution of what is the purpose of fashion. You know what I mean? And I think it challenges you. There's, you know, you the, the great thing is we all get older, um, so it is important to kind of listen and see other things that may not be the way you think. Um, what do you like in a, when you see a young designer pitch uh, or dossier? Do you, do you do you like when there's a <coughs> strong storytelling or this is a woman who's one one year at, yeah it was uh, about a woman taking ice creams from a machine, wow, and abortion and it it was very intense but very good yeah, but weird yeah. Do you need the strong storytelling or or like shock tactics are more important or like strong images? I don't know. When I look at when I was looking at all the projects with um, with the team on the panel, um, I, I I really believe in authenticity. So if I don't believe it's authentic, like it's authentically coming out of someone, then I I automatically reject. Mm -hmm. Like there's something in my because I, 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 you can see it through um, uh, when you when you when you're a creative director of a brand, you have to interview a lot of people for jobs. Um, my whole thing is never ask where they've been before. This is you know you don't. I never ask you know, well, what brands were you at? You know because it doesn't really matter. You know it, you can see it in the 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 work in progress. You know I always think the work in progress is just as important as the end result. It's like the thinkings of things. So I, I, I enjoy when I can look through a project and I can see an evolution that does not feel forced. It, you can feel that there's an honesty in it, you know, because there's mistakes. Um, you need mistakes, right? Mistakes are important. Accidents. Uh, yep, yeah, accidents, mistakes. They're, if you don't have a, enough failure or enough mistakes, then um, you'll never work. 
this, this is my theory. But so you have to, you have to. It, for me, fashion is this sort of like um, trial and error of trying to either push the barometer in this way or what you feel. So ultimately, that involves mistakes. I actually think some of the the greatest fashion shows are actually full of mistakes because that's what makes them real. You know what I mean? It, it, it kind of, you remember them because of that. Like sometimes I, I actually like shows when models fall because I feel like it is part of the performance. It's part of the mistake that, you know, the next season then you correct or you change or, mm -hmm. you know. There are great falls. As it There's been great nice. falls. <laughs> well, because, uh, all the models, it was really tough to see. Yeah, but I think, you know, I always remember a Prada show when I used to work there where girls were falling because of silk stockings and everyone was so like, but it was kind of so kind of beautiful in the, in the, the, in the kind of the way in which it was. And I remember it and I think mistakes you remember. Um, and I think, and we shouldn't, you know, I think I always, when I'm, you know, I get a lot of people who write to me or ask online and, you know, how, what, you know, how, how do you become a designer? How do you, and I'm, my whole thing is just like, you have to be willing to um, laugh at yourself. Um, you, at the same time, have to be willing to make mistakes. It's a very, I know it's a weird thing to say because I, you know, I think we're built, our precondition is to be built to not make mistakes. We, we I think at school, mm -hmm. We, we want to be perfect. We, we don't want to make mistakes because we don't want to be made fun of somehow. And I think um, in fashion, you need that. Yeah, beige can't work. Beige can't work. <laughs> uh, what kind of young designer <coughs> were you? you? You were working for different brands. Yeah. As well as working for your own brand. Yeah. And uh, for your own brand, you, your own brand, you, you had like, to, to my eye, you, you came to my eye because of shock tactics. Yeah. Well, maybe, I, I don't know if I wanted to be shocking. You were. Uh, I, but I was. I ended up being kind of like, somehow... Um, What's the most shocking thing you did? Well, the most shocking thing that... In the moment, it did not feel shocking, because I kind of lived with the collection for so long. I did a collection which was men in ruffled shorts. They had bustiers. It was all made out of felt. I had no money. And what what um, had they in the... And they, they had like... Feet? They had knee-high boots with like a ruffle. They had a short with a ruffle. They had a top with a ruffle. And... They so looked like tulip. Yeah, they were kind of like tulips. But and it was sort of... Um, the entire collection was made out of felt or like a men's coating fabrics. Um, because that was... And you didn't realize this was... What... So when we were doing it, it was this thing. I think we... I, I worked on it with um, uh, someone who I worked with for so many years, Benjamin Bruno. And we were in the studio, and in the beginning, it felt strange when we were doing it. By the end of it, when you started getting models in, and you were trying it on, and we were doing it, it was just, every time you saw it, you know, the, the, the problem with fashion is the more times you see it, the older it becomes. So... Nobody, nobody say, oh, this, this, so, this, and this wasn't, is... And it wasn't, there was not, when I did the show, I was very kind of... Very proud, obviously, and very quiet. and and the next morning I um, everybody clapped. At the end everyone clapped at the end. You know, the reviews came in the next day. Some of them were mixed. <laughs> Some of them were really bad. Um, and uh, I remember a very famous um, newspaper in Britain had decided that I had like destroyed masculinity. <laughs> and then I, good, and I took it really. That was the first time I really started. And that's why I mean, don't take yourself too serious. That's when I, saw, I took myself too seriously because I was so angry. Oh, you were? I got really... I'm laughing, sorry. Yeah, no, but I got very... In that moment, I got very angry because I was just like, you know, what the hell, why am I in Britain? Why does no one say it? You know, it was like, and it was, you know. And then I went through a phase where I wouldn't read reviews and I, would, I couldn't read because I didn't want to know. But it was a useful collection because it gave you a famous... Yeah. Uh, you but when I look back on one. it, I realized that you know when when institutions are wanting to borrow clothing from early collections, that is the one that you know usually you gets museums. yeah. So they ask that one to be donated usually, you know. Oh, wow. So, and then I started to real then I I, I or, then I started to kind of be intrigued with that moment of, you know, when I was trying to work out my brand's DNA. Mm -hmm. Why did that moment happen? 
and why why did it resonate? And m my whole thing was that I think we, as much as you know, people might have seen it as trying to be shocking. I think it was there to kind of agitate. Like it was a kind of like um, I don't know. It was just random because I, I did an interview just before you got here with Gilbert and George, and they were talking about like how people of my gener generation were kind of like spoiled brats. <laughs> and maybe it was me being a spoiled brat in, in terms of clothing. Um, it was a kind of, there was a kind of, uh, like a fuck you somehow, yeah, it <laughs> if was. we can say that. But Maybe it was an authentic one because you didn't even yeah. realize you were... Yeah, I didn't, and I think it was more kind of like, uh, when you start a business, which all of you will, um, or you work for another designer, which I'm sure all of you might have already done or go on to do, um, it's a nightmare. Like, starting a business <laughs> of your own is very difficult because you have a creative brain and you, have, you, want to, you want to show your work. And these two things sometimes don't want to work together, mm. you know? Um, and I remember when I was doing that show, we had no money and I think you know, I've, you know, I, I think I escaped bankruptcy with my own company many a time. Um, and I think that collection was a kind of moment of like all or nothing. It was like a kind of moment where like there was nothing left. If, we, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. We, we, we have nothing. Um, so, and I think when I look back on it, I, I, and, and as much as there's been many famous designers in history that, who are like, do not look back. Um, <laughs> I kind of don't mind looking back at that moment because I think it kind of defined, it rooted what J.W. Amazon was going to be ultimately. And it can take one moment. And I'm kind of glad that it wasn't print. <laughs> I'm, glad it, I'm kind of glad I wasn't known for just print. It was yeah. like, it was more of an archetype, mm -hmm. you know. I think it's like your first big explosion and it's, we still see the mushroom cloud of it. Yeah. And it's sort of interesting when I look back at those pieces, they're really badly made. Really? Um, yeah. It was sort of because... And they're in museums. And they're in museums, which is sort of strange because they're kind of like, the, when I, I remember getting them out, I had to bring them out for a museum show that I had done. And I actually, I was, some of them were so bad that I actually had to remake them because I was too embarrassed to show them <laughs> because they were kind of like, Sleepless nights. it was done on a domestic sewing machine, not an industrial sewing machine. So there was no overlocking. It was a zigzag stitch to kind of finish the scene. It was, it should stay naive. No, no we, the ones that are in, in actual museums are the originals. Okay. But um, when we sometimes like, I can, and then recently I, I did a Montclair collaboration and we redid them in Puffa. Um, don't know how they're going to sell, but um, they're there. Really? <laughs> they've, they've they produced made it, it. Yeah, they produced it, and okay, it was we did. Brave. Yeah, and they did a resurgence of it. So it, sometimes I think it's fine to be nostalgic with oneself. Um, I, I think anyone who kind of says never look back or you know fashion is always about looking forward, you know. I feel it's a very good pun line, but ultimately the reality is that you sometimes have to learn from it. Karl mm. Lagerfeld used you, to say, yes. never look back, never look yeah, back. Yeah, I remember that, that was the first thing. <laughs> I remember being at, it, um, at a, a lunch thing with him and he, uh, him quoting that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, or he was his whole thing about retrospectives. He never believed in retrospectives. Um, mm. He did a retrospective in uh, in Yer, yeah, actually yeah. A, a very nice one at the Villa Noailles. Yeah, and so I think you did uh, you did an exhibition for yes. this uh, festival. Can we you have. tell me about it? Mm. I think there's something really new that you mixed. Yeah, Loewe. it's the first time I've mixed the two collections. So Loewe and J W Anderson yeah. are mixed for the first time ever. First time at Yer. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I I just I've never seen them coexist together. The, in my head, they're not coexisting together. Uh -huh. And then I Never? think, I let, I, because they let other people do that. I let stylists do that in magazines or, because there are two different types oh, of, two different trains of thought. Um, and then when, when the festival asked me to, be, um, to do, the, to be the president, I was just like, okay, well, when I was talking to the teams, I was like, well, why don't we kind of just show them on mannequins as two, two different things? but ultimately they, they are from one voice, ultimately. And, and it's actually, I, I, when I, we were setting up the pictures... Yes, this is Saint-Sulpice. Yeah, that is Saint-Sulpice, yeah. I hope you're listening to the bells of Saint-Sulpice. <laughs> we are live. 
Because the, the office is in front of l'église Saint-Sulpice. Yeah. Very, 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 very grateful to have an office. Oh, office mal, the, the light for how long, so I don't know. Um, it looks like orangey, no? What's the color? Yeah, of I think that's because right the now. rain is about to come. Oh, wow. It's probably not raining where you are. And you're are. like used to it or you're still amazed by it? I am so. Well, it's Paris. You know, I'm a tourist here. Mm -hmm. I'm ultimately oh, wow. a kind of like um, a glorified tourist who, <laughs> who still lives in Paris. Um, so let's go back to the exhibition. Yeah, the on. exhibition. Um, yeah, no, so it's the first time they coexist together. And I, and I was working with... Um, Paula, who works on our architectural team, and she was putting it all together, and then she was sending me pictures when she was setting it up. And it was kind of strange to see them because they're kind of, they're all from different moments. It's men's and women's, and it's, it's sort of, there is obviously huge crossovers. Um, as much in my head, I determined with the press, that there is no crossover, there's huge crossovers. Um, contradiction. Um, but, you know, and I think it's, it's actually really, it makes me very humble to see them all together, actually. And I'm kind of glad I did it. I was a bit nervous at the beginning of putting people seeing them together in that way. Um, but no, really, it's, it's sort of cathartic somehow. Is there a piece you are particularly happy to see again? See again? again? Yeah. There's like a knit, like a kind of like turquoise and yellow knit that looks like a kind of From sponge. Which brand? From JW. Which okay. I didn't even know we still had. <laughs> So, because I, I was like, when I was picking the looks, I was like, do we still have this one? Because usually things go missing. And, and it was there. It's a miraculous thing, it was there. So, um, uh, that was really nice to see again. And then I kind of was like, whoa, we did go very far. <laughs> it was maybe way too much. But um, it was nice to see that again. You still go far. You still go on way. I mean, yeah. the last uh, presentation you did uh, two weeks ago in Paris yeah. for Weve. You're still pushing the envelope, and you said something really interesting that you 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 asked. I mean, it was an, it was a very collective collection, if I understood well. Yeah. As you asked, uh, can you tell me what you asked for the teams to do during lockdown? You know, I, I was kind of um, as the lockdown progressed, and I was looking at people <laughs> via Zoom, and people were becoming more and more. Uh, Grey. Uh, I was becoming, my hair was becoming more crazy and <laughs> I think I was drinking more coffee than ever. Um, I, I started to kind of think, well, this is not a moment for a definitive vision. Like it was not like me dictating the vision or whatever it was going to be. Um, and I kind of just turned around and said, uh, you know, decide whatever you want. Like, what, you know, I, I want you to do something you've always wanted to do. Like, in terms of clothing, I don't care if it's, you know, if you want to go extreme or you want to go super simple or you want to do a suit or... And I was just like, I, I want something that you're going to be able to be... Uh, to remember this moment, ultimately. Because um, my whole thing with the... When the lockdown happened, I was like, kind of like... I always think, you know, it, you always just have those, like, kind of... My, my parents would always be like, well, you know, your grandparents lived through the war and you will never realize what it was like, you know? And, and I don't think we have ever gone through something that, you know, where we would ever be like, oh, do you remember what it was like? And I, and I my whole thing was with, when I was looking at people, I was like, well, how are we going to remember it? Like, there's no point rejecting it and pretending like life is, let's get back to normal. And it's this, you know, we just mm -hmm. want to, I was like, why don't we just kind of like dive into this nightmare? You know what I mean? And enjoy it. And, and it was interesting watching people working at home on the mannequin, building these looks as a huge collaboration of everyone in different parts of the country, working at home, some people with children, some people, you know, like some people on their own for the entire thing. You know, it was, and, and I think clothing has the power through making to, to distract you. You know, it has this, it's nearly like, like if you're, you know, if you're on the telephone and you're bored, you kind of draw whatever it is. It's a form I, of yoga. Yeah. And I think there was something in, you know, I, when I look at the clothing, it's, I, for me, it's my favorite collection. Oh, really? Yeah, because I think it was, it's so, um, it's not logical. And I, and, and I kind of like that there was no logic to it. Um, there's accidents, you mean? There's yeah, there was, there was like, it was like kind of this fabric didn't really make sense with that. It was like, you know, because it was fabrics 
that we had. So it was like, how do you reinterpret a fabric you already have and make it feel new again? Um, and that's why we did the show in the box, because I felt like... So what's a show in a box? A show in a box was really the only option for me, <laughs> because I was kind of... Which uh, week you decided to do a show I, in a box like into the, the lockdown? The, I think, what, it was like first week, second week? Ah, bon? Was it second or third week? Ah, ouais, that and I, no, but I think I remember I ringing... I had crazy ideas only at week four. No, but as I remember, because I, I just knew when I was speaking to Pascal <clears throat> and to Jenny, the two CEOs of both brands, I was like, well, how, how, like, how is menswear going to happen? Like, this, oh, yeah. you know, and then, and even if it could happen, like, what state were we going to be? You know, no one really knew. Um, and I remember ringing the office and being like, can someone find me a copy of Marcel Duchamp's, uh, I don't know what you're thinking, the, the name of it's gone. Um, but anyway, his the box, his very where, famous box. Where there's all the replicas. Of yeah, where you have like the replicas and it kind of, of opens uh, like this. Masterpieces. Yeah, and it was, um, anyway, they did a re-edition with it, Tashner or whoever. Um, so I remember having that, FedEx to me and then... So Marshall Duchamp is an inspiration. Yeah. Is a reference I didn't know. And it was like, that for me was this like, well, okay, well this is how you can still make something iconic in in a small, in, in a kind of uh, personal domestic space. Because mm -hmm. I was trying to think of how does clothing exist ultimately not in the show landscape, but in the domestic landscape. So like if you had something, you might be sitting on a sofa or you might be you know, confined to your room or, you, you know, so it had to be something that kind of, uh, like a television, like narrowed the, the room. So it's 1,000 copies? Yeah, of, one is, well, I think boxes. one was 700 or five, one was 700, one was 500 at JW, there was 1,000 copies of the last one that we just did. Um, and the last one, for example, you have a brush, you have uh, something to yeah. paste, you have a papier Everything. pain. Yeah. Everything, everything you need to redecorate your room. A smell. <laughs> and you had a smell. What Beetro is the smell? Beetroot. <laughs> why is it? Why beetroot? I love. I just like the smell. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Something about beetroot. I, I love that think. you don't even have to explain more than that for your team to accept and find. You know, but the, I think everyone really beetroot. They enjoy. I think everyone in. I don't know. Maybe they probably won't tell me. They probably didn't enjoy it actually because it was a nightmare. To probably do, but we got it done. But I think everyone's really proud of it. I think they are. You know, and I think it's that's like, fun, no? And it's fun, and it's sort of like it is a big object. It's like a you know ultimate. Who, who got it? Uh, press got it. Like people who you know, people who go to the Wafe a lot and shop at the Wafe. Ah, you can buy it. No, you can't buy it. Ah, no. But if you buy a lot. No, I think if you bought a lot, or there's people who I like, oh, or okay. people friends. I thought, friends, or people who got involved, or... or the winner of the uh, year festival get one vote? You never box. know. We could, oh, we could, we, you never know. I don't know if that's, that's Charlie's looking at me. We don't have any left. Um, you never know. Um, cool for us. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, no, it's sort of, I, I don't know, it's... it's uh, I think it's something, at least, it marks the occasion. Mm -hmm. And I think fashion is about taking in the occasion, ultimately. So I think it was a, it was a fun process. And it looks like, in a way, it looks like the projects, the students uh, and the young designers are yeah, selling yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, no, I have all of them in my office. And, and there is like, there's a can, I have like smells, I have... How is it? There's, there's stickers, there's like... It and shows it, in and the it, box? And it boxes. shows in the box. And I kind of... So that's very young. And I think it's actually really, I've actually enjoyed, I, I think what's been really nice, I, I, I'm one for speed, um, but it's actually kind of made, made me kind of like actually look at things more. Like it actually kind of like, I've been kind of like they've been in the office and I kind of go over to it and then I come back away from it and then I go back over to it and, you know, and it's sort of intriguing. And I, and I think, you know, I think we all like, as much as like, the digital world is where you're in the digital world. But you know, like it, it's great, but it is, we, we sometimes throw it away. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what was nice is when you see all the project and you see all the effort that's gone in, the, the creativity can be in anything, do you mean? And, and, I think, and I think sometimes we should maybe hold on to that a bit more. You know, like there's something 
I don't know. I've really, I really, I, I think it's really humbling that you know that when you make a document, you know, when I, I always think of like some of my favorite moments in history are like sort of like when the Stedelijk Museum sort of doing all these amazing shows, and then you could buy these like crazy boxes with like a rose in it, or and they were like artist editions that were kind of odd pieces of ephemera, but now when we look back on them, they are like these iconic moments like in Duchamp but like you look back on this and it's sort of or diaries you know like you know some of the most amazing films are based on diaries or and I think you know when you make a document like when people were trying to communicate in different ways I'm not there and you know we're doing this digitally but at the same time I have a tangible to touch and kind of understand someone's process ultimately you know which I think is is really very gener uh, generous. It, it's really interesting because it's your way to reinvent the fashion show, the, the model going this and this yeah. into UNESCO. So it was not a yeah. very this and this thing. Like um, but that was always a very, you know, you know, obviously shows will come back and they will come back with a vengeance. Um, and everyone's crossing their fingers that it will. But there is ultimately, but at the same time, fashion show, I've always found fashion shows the most bizarre thing. They are. Because it's sort of like you have a model that walks around, usually with people sitting. Snub people. And looking up at... Bored people, people dead like people. people. Angry people, yes. happy people, and... or Rich people. And rich people. Um, so n no one is easy to please. No one's easy to please. And then you have this like group of like um, models that walk around for 15 minutes. And then we dismantle the entire thing. Um, so, in a weird way, it's been kind of nice to have a year of not having shows and kind of looking at the show as an abstract, in a weird way, because you kind of get distance from things. And I, and I actually think, um, for anyone in design, you know, I think sometimes it's good to take distance from your own work and step back from it and critique it yourself or critique things that are wrong in things, you know what I mean? I think it's been a great, you know, I've, I've kind of enjoyed right now to be able to think differently. It's not that I want the world to be like the new digital world and we're all gonna just do this all the time. I think it's just quite nice to have distance from it and in a weird way, look at the show or look at fashion in this moment and think, well, what is relevant right now? You know, sometimes when you're in it, it's very difficult to see relevancy. Because you're not, you know, sometimes that's why it's always quite nice. I always wish that sometimes I was a bystander looking in. Because then you can see what's working. But when you're in it, you're kind of like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, you don't see it. And I think over the last three or four weeks, I've kind of, you can start to see really quickly what is really old and what's really new. And I don't think I would have saw that if I had been in the five to seven days of doing the show, you know, drinking way too much coffee, not sleeping, and uh, even though we're completely organized at the Webby, but I think it's like, I, I go through some sort of like weird kind of like artist punishment process towards the show, and then kind of like, then kind of go through another kind of sadomastic thing where, where you kind of like read all the reviews, you know, and it's sort of, and it's been quite nice to realize that that is actually really unhealthy and not very good. Um, and step back and kind of say, well, you know, let it go a bit. And I think, you know, I think I'm starting to kind of feel like when I was first starting out, where I feel like next year is about, you know, you know, in a weird way, like going through all the projects, you realize it is about the next. You know, I don't want to know the old, I want to know the next. I want to know who's next. I so want you're to like, go now. Yeah, in a weird way, I've kind Never of maybe back. I'm getting old <laughs> somehow. I but, wish you. It's, but a, it's a luxury no, to be old. Yeah, but it's there's this like kind of um, there is an immediacy, and I think that's what's really exciting with everyone who has taken part in in Festival of the Year. There's an immediacy of of um, design, and I think you can start to see that. Like, I think as we head into this decade. The, the need for newness and immediacy in clothing and looking at things from all different um, angles. Like I was just, you know, 
about two hours ago talking about someone like saying that like, privilege is one of the most dangerous things. Um, I'd never thought that. And, and I think we should question things. And I think, you know, to anyone who works in any form of fashion or art or architecture or wants to be involved in it, you have to be willing to dismantle it. Because fashion is about privilege. Yeah, so you have to dismantle it. And if you dismantle it, you find newness through it. Because I think, I think... Do you see the steam coming out of my brain right now? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm trying to work out what, what you know, you? What, what it's all about. And I think, you know, in a weird way, I'm glad that I am, that I am doing this process of being a president of something. You know, and, and really kind of, I've had the privilege to be able to go through all these things. I'm not there in person, but I have, I have felt like I am receiving the information like I have put out information. So it feels like my eye is ready for that. Um, but it, what I think is, what it kind of leaves me with, and I hope that everyone is in this point when things are very um, confusing ultimately, is that maybe the idea of fashion um, coming from a place of privilege or coming from a place of the distance. You know, like fashion is always about the distance. You go into the shop, it's like the distance. It's sort of, you have to kind of approach the counter. Maybe what I've noticed with a lot of things is that I think, and it's not about young people. I feel like everyone's like, oh, it's about Generation Z or, you know, whatever. So I don't think it's, I think it's just the zeitgeist is moving differently. I think people want responsibility from products. I think, you know, we do have the, we, we are in the middle of a pandemic, which is due to a natural phenomenon, which is we are not looking after the, uh, the world, ultimately. We're not looking after people, We're, you know. So all these things come from a place of privilege because we, you know, we're very privileged to be able to have, to be able to consume as much as we have. We have a privilege to be able to travel the world. We have a, so I think for me, it's about looking how we can get out of, it's not about speed, but get out of the dogma of it, where you're kind of like, well, maybe it's about, we can change things, no matter if you're really small. And I think that's the most important thing that I could tell anyone, um, today is that no matter how small you are, yeah. you are able to, you can create huge explosions right at the top. Um, are you still do things there? I, I, but I always think you have to be an anarch somewhere. You have to have an anarch. I think if you're in fashion there, you, there, you need to have an anarch in you because it is about undoing and redoing, undoing and redoing. So you need a lot of energy. Reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Uh, you think to, uh, energy is important in, in fashion? I do, because I think you have to challenge people. And sometimes you have to, sometimes, sometimes you have to be very politely challenge them, and sometimes you have to hit them in the face. Um, and sometimes you have to do it multiple times until it, the message goes through. Um, and sometimes you have to do that through rejection. Um, um, because... Fashion is one of these things that everyone in the world is somehow involved in. Um, it is like, it, it is, you know, I did a show many years ago at a museum which was called Disobedient Bodies, which was actually came at a point in my life where I didn't actually believe in fashion. Oh, really? It was an art form. I, it I was, was not a, 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 you said a show, it was not a fashion show, it was, a, it, it was an a, exhibition. an exhibition. And it was like kind of exploring this idea, was fashion art really? For me, it wasn't the title of it, but it was more about how the body could be a blob in sculpture, it could be dance, it could be whatever. Um, it could be me. It could be you. And I was going through this like kind of thing where I was like, um, I was struggling with this idea that art was this like thing that was my luxury. It was like this thing that I looked up. It was above. There was above, and then you know, like an architecture was above, and and in a weird way, I kind of felt like the other art forms kind of felt like fashion was just like. Um, and I did this entire. What do you mean by? It's just everywhere. Oh. Okay. Um, and it sort of had lesser meaning somehow, and I was kind of feeling influenced by this. So when doing the show, I went through this entire process of like, well, looking at history and looking at like sculpture done at the same time as a Madame Grey dress and looking at Aileen Grey and then looking at Henry Moore and then looking at Giacometti. 
And, it, and then I started to realize as Arp was doing um, one of his like pinnacle sculptures, you had Christian Dior doing one of the most uh, new forms of shape on the body, done in the same period. And then I kind of realized that comes together. It comes together. Um, and it's all about the idea of collaboration. And when I looked at the sort of like, in the, you know, in the early, you know, 1910, 1920, through to the 30s, there was this moment just before the war, and then another section after the war where everyone collaborated, you know. You had like designers working with artists, textile people, you know. You know, you had like Barbara Hepworth making fabric, Henry Moore making, there was no hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we, someone came up with this great idea that that art was going to be ranked here and it was going to be perceived at distance and fashion then decided that distance was a great idea to sell so that we put everything in behind glass cabinets and you know you were kind of aggressed as you came into the store to kind of make you feel like you wanted something because you couldn't have it um, but now I think Please, we're, <laughs> yeah and now I think we're I think the generations that are working now and are ready to kind of come are going through the process you guys ultimately are got this amazing blank canvas now where you can just say well no let's just redo it again you know that that's what's great about fashion you can redo it again and it's fine to look back it is fine to reference anyone who says to you don't reference is crazy the greatest some of the greatest designers in history have referenced. Karl Lagerfeld has referenced. Oh, yeah. He referenced culture. He references this or this artist or this thing, or he was fascinated by something, a dress, it could be in a ballet. If you ever feel that you are shamed through the process of referencing, it is because people are scared to take ownership. And I think, you know, when you work in fashion, don't ever think you own it. Let go of it. Because there's always going to be something else that you're going to be obsessed by. Um, and things that go out of fashion come back, um, so, which is fun. And you told uh, to me 10 days ago when you were doing the Louis Vuitton presentation, I fell, in, uh, I fell in love with fashion again. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Because uh, it's a very positive thing. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think the shows leading up to it, I felt like um, the two years before, I think I was in this thing where I, I was I, I was a bit more dark. I felt like I had to keep proving too much coffee, uh, too much coffee, and I was like, you know, this show has to be better and better and better and better and better. And it was like I kind of got like a rabbit wheel. Yeah, and I was like kind of like working for the sake of working through the process of it, and, and I kind of got slightly lost in it. And I kind of felt like fashion was it, it turned into work, and 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 I never went into fashion to be. To work. This oh, really? is, my idea was that it was just going to be, um, well, you know, I was just lucky. <laughs> Ultimately, okay. that was my whole thing that if I could wake up every day, do this job. And I got into this point where I felt like I was starting to work and it was starting like, and, um, and when I was working through this process, to cut the long story, uh, story short, is that when I was working through the process of doing the collection via Zoom with no connection with anyone, so lockdown happened. Yeah, I was like kind of like, I was like getting sketches in from the design team and things, and they were, be I was like, they, they were becoming more radical. And I was like, kind of like, isn't it amazing what fashion can be? And I was like, and I was kind of like, when I would watch TV, I was like, I'm so lucky. Like, I forgot how lucky I was. And I think, you know, uh, I, I think now, as we go through this process, and as we go through the next 10 years, I, I used to be like, you know, in, in my, my, my kind of advice was given to me by this woman called Manuela Pavese, who used to, I used to do windows with her at Prada, and her whole thing was like never to compromise. And she said that? Yeah, she was like, never compromise. And so every, time I, so every time I would get someone to ask me the question, like, what, you know, what advice would you give? I would be like, just never compromise. <laughs> um, is it but now advice? I've changed. No, now I've not. kind of, kind of, through this process, I've kind of be, uh, I've been kind of like, uh, my best advice I think now, from what I have learned of starting to fall in love with fashion again, um, and what the possibilities it can give people, um, is that you should wake up every morning and feel 
that you are so lucky to do what you do. And I think if you believe in it, um, because there is a lot of people who don't have that. And I think as we enter into this new decade, which has started off with a great start, maybe it's good because I think it maybe shows us what we can lose um, and what we already have, you know what I mean? So I think there's been days where I kind of go in ways where I forget the, the knowledge that I have learned through it, where I get quite down about the whole overriding thing. And the only way that I think the trick is, is you have to kind of always actually be quite humble and realize that you're incredibly lucky. That So I think anyone, you know, in this competition or anyone that you work with or anyone that comes to in the future to work with you, um, you should be humble. I, I think the idea of the the sultan or the the kind of you know the the cliche of the ivory tower that's mentioned in every fashion book or that's over and it's fine for it to be over it, it's fine for certain things to go to the pages of history because no it's not over please because i, I think myself because it can go to something i know but there can be another way of looking at things and i think Okay, no sultans, but some. We can have some a few. Sultans. We can have Just a few sultans. But it, I do think there Just is... The I think people need... I, I think what... Um, I, I, maybe I could be completely wrong. We might come to this if we were going to come out and everyone's going to be like, a you sultan. know... Everyone's going to be a sultan. <laughs> um, but I think while we're in a moment where we do not know what is real mm -hmm. and what is fake, and what is politically right or politically incorrect or what is we actually just want transparency i think we are heading towards a point where we want the truth and maybe confronting the truth might humble us and if we don't confront the truth mother nature will make sure that we are confronted by the truth so i think you know i think it is a moment of reckoning and i think young people can you know you know, there are certain things that, you know, I have to keep learning, you know, and, you know, with, with the environment and how, you know, sometimes it would be great to, you know, make everything out of this, but it might not be good, you know, and, and but we learn, set realistic goals to achieve them. Do not kind of over, you know, promise and under deliver, you know. Never promise. Never. Thank you very much. Thank you very Jonathan. much. And thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you a lot. Uh, maybe a tip for a young designer in, I, uh, in here to this, for yeah. this weekend. I think have loads this, of fun. Yeah, yes, they should. Uh, I think you should have loads of fun and um, enjoy. And relax and enjoy. And, and, and meet and be nice. Say and be nice to, and say, and say hi, hi to everyone. everyone. That's important. All right. Thank you. Coucou hier. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>